I suggest you study this. The views and opinions expressed on the Fago Lovers podcast do not necessarily reflect those of us here at FagoLovers.net. Some episodes may contain disturbing content. Discretion is advised. What up, though, motherfuckers? It's me, Sweet Sugar Slam up in this bitch. With some serious, super live freshness. In case you ain't noticed, it's that special time of year. A time for sharing, caring, and getting drunk as fucking blue out. But did you know the suicide rate more than doubles this time of year? Yes, it does, bitch. Real talk. That's because motherfuckers can't pay the rent, the heat bill is extra fat, the back left window don't roll up, and on top of that, the fucking kids want shit. They want mad shit. Shit like extra expensive super wheeze and nuclear Nerf guns. It's enough to drive anybody over the edge. I believe... It's important for all of us to lend a hand wherever possible. Even if you ain't got shit yourself, it still feels good to give to someone who needs shit worse than you. Especially the kids, man. Give to the fucking kids. Don't be a dick. What's up, Juggalos, and welcome to this very special Christmas episode of the Fago Lovers Podcast. Today is December 17th, 2017. This is episode number 29. I am your homie, Roscoe, and I'm going to be your host for this very special Christmas episode of the Fago Lovers Podcast. Check it out, homies. Who better to have on a Christmas episode of anything relating to the underground than our homie, Kid Crusher? That's right. Me and Kid Crusher go over three possible new albums dropping in 2018. Uh, we actually, <laughs> we actually only go over two possible albums dropping in 2018, but he kind of mentions a third one there at the end of the interview. Uh, listen in for that. Touring America, movies, influences, and a whole lot more. Definitely stick around for that. Oh, also his plans for the holidays. Stick around for that. I know in the last episode of the podcast, I said that we're going to have Intrinsics reading of The Night Before Christmas on this episode, uh, Christmas episode. He does the reading of Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven for our Halloween episodes, and I don't know what ninjas think of that, but I think that shit is fucking dope, so I really wanted his version of The Night Before Christmas. Unfortunately, he had to move, ironically enough. Uh, Coincidentally, Kid Crusher, him and I had to actually reschedule his interview once because he was moving, so... That's fucking weird. Either way, no Night Before Christmas from Intrinsic on this episode of the podcast, but we do have our homie Juggalotus of Fagolovers.net on this episode. We go over reviews, interviews for Fagolovers.net, the new Justice League movie, believe it or not, the holidays, and more. Tune in for that. Last year, Juggalos and Juggalettes helped horrorcore rapper Mars win two awards at the Bay Award Nine Quota Awards. This year, Mars and Swizz of Force 5 Records have both been nominated for awards. Hit up the link in the show notes to vote for them. Check it out. Mars was actually nominated in four categories. He was nominated for Album of the Year for Glaucoma, Community Humanitarian, Nine Quota Overall Artist, and Hip Hop Single for Creatures of the Night with Tech 9 and Twisted. Swizz was nominated for... The Jacka Male Hip Hop Award and music video for the music video Fakewood. Hell yeah. Voting only takes one minute, ninjas. Hit up the link in the show notes. I was hitting up YouTube to see if there was anything worth posting in the video section over at fagolovers.net when I noticed something fresh. Figured it was worth the post. Figured it was worth mentioning here on the podcast. Over at Twisted's official YouTube channel, Magic Ninja Entertainment has posted a live stream of nothing but music from the entire MNE roster. That's right, I'm talking the entire Magic Ninja Entertainment roster. You can actually hit up the link in the show notes to check out that live stream, uh, or just hit up Official Twisted on YouTube. Last thing before we get into the new segments of this episode of the podcast, this Christmas episode of the podcast. Merry Christmas. Uh, I gotta say, no matter what the Billboard numbers say, this album is absolutely the bomb, and I'm talking about the Twisted Presents The Year of the Sword album. This is the first compilation album dropped from Magic Ninja Entertainment, And every artist that suddenly popped onto a track and made that first big entrance onto the album was fucking dope as hell. 
And I honestly hope they follow up next year with another year of album. That shit would be dope. Uh, this is not an album review, though, so check it out. Number three on the top independent album charts. Number 81 on the top 200 album charts. That shit's fucking dope. Number 34 on the top R&B and hip-hop album charts. And number 25 on the top rap album charts. Very dope. Honestly, better than I was expecting for a compilation album. Congrats to you, Magic Ninjas. Hit up TwistedShop.com and buy that shit if you haven't already, Ninjas. I think I was literally like, I don't even know, like fucking eight years old when I stopped believing in Santa Claus. But now that I'm an adult, I'm thinking, what if I was wrong? Subscribe to Kid Crusher Patreon, $20 per month. <laughs> Dreams come and go, Dad with the sun, which want to see more caroling once every year. I kill the chair, blood everywhere, pain in the air, bell is above, God is the sun, bitch want to be on ketamine. Once he is near, he's going to fear blood everywhere, pain in the air. Each holiday, I want to say fuck everything in front of me. You're going to see I'm going to be on a killing spree. Ain't this neat? Blood on the streets. Blood on my clothes, blood on my foes, leave them all froze. x miss lights, bring me sight, find them in dead of night. I just don't want to go any damn further without a new victim to try out this burner. What you think, kiddos? Oh, sick, miss some zippos. A gas cannon matches can lead to some sickos. Oh no, I'm Lobo off Soko. My shotgun, I smell like some homegrown. I seen this them and popped one slug hit him dead he tripped and he stuttered finally killed this whack motherfucker now i don't know why or what i am doing but on christmas eve i find myself shooting random ass people cause it's so amusing to watch bodies drop just like in the movie Happy holidays to everybody from the Time Mount King. Ho, 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 let's just go! Ha, ha. Holy shit, y'all. First piece of news on the docket regarding our homie, the Dirt Ball. And I've been working at Fago Lovers for about a year and a half, and I can honestly not remember the last time we saw a piece of news regarding the Dirt Ball, so check this out. That Ninja is going to be hitting the road playing some shows this coming January along with DJ Eddie Ruxpin. Dirtball is going to be starting out in Salt Lake City at Liquid Joe's on January 18th. Hit up the link in the show notes to check out more dates or hit up the Dirtball on Facebook. The newest addition to the Magic Ninja Entertainment roster, Lars, comprised of Bizarre of D12 and King Gordy, are dropping their debut full-length album on February 16th, 2018. They've already dropped their Foul World mixtape on the label, and that shit definitely went above and beyond my expectations. Uh, Now there are six pre-order bundles available at TwistedShop.com for that new shit, including bundles with the Foul World mixtape, Lars t-shirts, a hoodie, a Lars poster, and an ultimate bundle. Hit up the link in the show notes to see all six of those pre-order bundles, ninjas. Over at Ranker.com, they've put together yet another list about Juggalos, as they really seem to be fascinated with us. This time, the article tells us the untold truth about Juggalos, what it really means to be down with the clown. Don't worry, though, because this article mainly focuses on the positive aspects about being a Juggalo, and talks about the Juggalo march and our case against the FBI. Check out what they have to say in the article. Fans of the Detroit rap duo known as the Insane Clown Posse are infamous for their elaborate clown makeup and their rowdy behavior at concerts. Known as Juggalos and Juggalettes, these people have managed to build an entire community around a single band, and that community has developed a rather poor reputation among mainstream Americans. In 2011, Juggalos were officially designated a loosely organized hybrid gang by the FBI, further solidifying their unsavory rep. Because of their overwhelmingly negative portrayal in the media, a lot of Juggalos feel that their eccentric family is being misrepresented. The truth about Juggalos is that they are nowhere near as psychopathic as their musical tastes and clown makeup suggests. They are people like anyone else, and they've managed to foster a community of love and family that is seemingly invisible to most outsiders. Every year they come together to celebrate the Gathering of the Juggalos, a music festival centered around ICP and the Juggalo lifestyle. To some, they may seem scary, 
but most people have no first-hand experience and are unable to judge what Juggalos are really like. The reality is that being a Juggalo or Juggalette goes beyond ICP. It's a family that looks to create lasting bonds within the community and celebrate weirdness in all forms. It's about homies, relationships, and building a support system for people who have been treated like outcasts for their entire lives. Being down with the clown means being a part of something larger than yourself. And the vast majority of Juggalos and Juggalettes are just people looking to have a good time without the fear of society's judgment. I ain't never given drink up. I ain't never given drink up. I ain't never given drink up. To all my technicians out there repping the snake and bat. Tech Nine's album Planet drops on March 2nd and is available for pre-order right now. The album comes available in two different versions. Both versions come with a limited edition Planet t-shirt, uh, extra large only, a strange music sticker, and a free download track, but you gotta pre-order fast to get that special flavor. Check it out. The standard Planet CD version with all that extra shit comes for eighteen ninety eight. The deluxe autographed Planet CD version with a limited edition Planet Pendant with all the extra shit comes for $24.98. So we know that strange music artists featured on the album include Mackenzie Nicole, Chris Calico, Darian Safran, and Joey Cool. Very cool. You can pre-order that shit right now at strangemusicinc.net or hit up the link in the show notes. Aw, oh, shit. So, if any of you ninjas listen to episode number 21 of the Fago Lovers podcast featuring Lil Poke of Project Born, then you would have heard that Project Born had plans for a Born Dead 3 and 4. Uh, Born Dead 3 was going to be a national release, while Born Dead 4 was going to be an extremely exclusive CD only release of shit material exclusive only to that CD. That info was supposed to be dropped by Halloween, but it never did. Now we're seeing that Project Born has announced uh, Born Dead 3, The Reaper's Revenge. Hell yeah. The third album in their Born Dead trilogy, that's going to be dropping sometime in 2018. More details are going to be announced when Project Born has done rockin' shows with ICP, and they have a better idea of when that release date is going to be. Keep your eyes and ears peeled, homies. Big shout out to my homies over at Replicom Radio. Those ninjas got them an interview with the one and only Isham the Unholy uh, for the very first episode aired on their newly revamped station. Props to them for that. Isham discusses his new album, Dead of Winter, which is going to be released in time for the Dead of Winter tour. He reveals the entire track list for that album. He compares Isham's booming with the California wildfires and spits his drink out from laughing so hard and a whole lot more. This episode originally aired live on December 11th. You can check that out over at replicomradio.com or hit up the link in the show notes. Also, on the next episode of Replicom Radio, which is airing either tomorrow or today, depending on when you're listening to this shit, Jimmy Don, he recently dropped the mixtape How to Gag a Maggot with King Gordy. How to Gag a Maggot. The same day as uh, Lars's Foul World mixtape, as well as uh, The Nameless with Gruesome. This shit airs every Monday, 6 p.m. Central, replicomradio.com. We are going to play you a sound clip of that Isham interview from Replicom Radio. Uh, they discuss nothing that we said that they just discussed, but shit is fucking dope. So check it out. Ninjas, the Replicon is watching. We are live. What do we got going on with here a legend. over there? We have a fucking legend. A legend. The creator. The goddamn legend himself. Motherfucking episode one of the reboot. The creator. We're dropping bombs already. The godfather. Yeah. Of the wicked Mr. shit, Mr. The unholy. Hopefully, himself. one eye doesn't talk over him too much. Don't talk the unholy. Over him. But yeah, we got a very special guest on the motherfucking line: the Godfather, the unholy, the creator of the shit we all know and love, Mr. Esham. Are you there, brother? What up, Doe Replica Radio? Oh, What's shit, cracking, what man? Cracking. How are you doing, man? We are great. Oh, I'm doing good, man. How y'all doing today? Doing we're, good. We're doing out good. here living, beautiful. man. We're beautiful. We had to break away from our previous 
Spots. We're doing we're doing our uh, official reboot tonight. Right, we, we broke away from our previous location and our previous bosses of the yeah, radio. Yeah, we're, we're the owners of our own shit now as of today. Oh shit! So this is a very special day then. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it is number it one. Is. And you it was special to begin with because we had Isham on. Now it's even more special nice. because we are, we yeah, the boss day now. Day one of the of That's the future. Right. Y'all done powered up. That's what's up. That's man. right. Fuck yeah. So what's on y'all mind today, brothers? Hell yeah, man. So essentially what we do here, man, we talk we talk to people, we talk to people in the underground, we try to, you know, get to know everybody a little bit better. So what we like to do to begin with, you know, I know a lot of people obviously know Isham, you're a legend, especially in the world we we run in. Um but we like to go back to the beginning, man, and see how it all started. Jump in the time. You machine. know, um I know you know, we're talking nineteen eighty nine, you released Boomin Words of Hell, like how did it all get started for Isham, like, way back in the day before any of this existed? Oh, man. I mean, I was just a a wee little lad uh, back in um, New York, that is. It started in New York, actually, in a place called Amityville, you know. And um, that's where I really got my start at because that's where I was actually born. But we moved to Detroit when I was little, so, you know, my mom and my, uh, her sisters and my grandfather ended up moving up to Detroit when I was maybe like three years old, but my grandmother, she still stayed in Amityville. So, you know, I would travel back and forth from Detroit to Amityville, New York, you know, all throughout my, you know, younger years and up to my adolescence, you know, all the way up until my grandma passed away. Rest, rest in peace to my grandma, Sadie Mae. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, that's where I got my start. You know, it's basically started off like in New York, man, with just the whole hip hop and just that whole, that whole wave that exploded. And, um, being that I was right there and smack dab in the middle of it, I caught the hip hop bug and I brought it back to Detroit with me. <laughs> It's been a very long time since we've heard any news about Cottonmouth Kings on the music front, but it looks like both d and Johnny Richter may be teasing the release of a new King Spade album. Hell yeah, or at least some new King Spade material. On December 1st, d posted a picture to his Instagram with the caption stating, You never know who you'll run into in the old neighborhood. Then both Johnny and d posted a picture to their respective Instagram accounts along with the following announcement, Met on Mackenzie in 85, 2018, the dream is still alive. King Spade. Hell yeah. The image posted to the new King Spade account was accompanied with the message, Welcome home, family, and friends. Now this does not technically confirm that there's any um, new King Spade material coming out, but it is actually very good to hear some positive news, if any news at all, regarding uh, new Cottonmouth King's material, or in this case, uh, new King Spade material. I would say that the creation of an official King Spade Instagram account definitely would seem to indicate that something is in the works, but what do you think? Could it be like a new EP, a new single, an album, a video? Who the fuck knows? On a side note, d also mentioned over at Cottonmouth King's Instagram page that he's begun work on a Cottonmouth King's documentary on how the band was put together, where it's at today, and everything in between. So look forward to that. Make sure to hit up Richter d and the new King Spade official Instagram accounts for any development, and you're going to see the information as it drops, Ninja. Hit up the link in the show notes. Just a quick piece of ABK news dropping for you. On December 4th, a new flyer appeared on ABK's Facebook page for a tour happening early next year. It's going to be called the St. Killa Tour, and it's now booking dates. Here's what was posted. It says, now booking ABK's St. Killa Tour for March 2018. Contact admin at hatchawarrior.com or earlrwallace at gmail.com for booking info. Once some dates start popping up, make sure to hit up fagolovers.net and we are going to let you ninjas know about that shit. For sure. For sure, homie. Alright, those were some pretty quick new segments. We're going to get into our interview with the homie Juggalotus. Then we're going to get into a commercial break. And when we get back, we're going to be talking to our homie, Kid Crusher. Very special Christmas episode of the Fago Lovers Podcast. Stick around. Just a win Christmas. 
Christmas comes, they'll be shedding a tear. Breaking in people crib for some cookies and shit. Somebody needs to bust a cap in that lunatic. Before his old ass really does something bad. Drunk driving in a sleigh, you know we bound to crash. And I don't even want him in. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm here with Juggalotis. Homie, how the hell are you? What's up, man? How have you been? I'm doing excellent, brother. Almost Christmas, so definitely looking forward to that shit. For sure. So just right off the bat, uh, for the ninjas who may not know, Juggalotis works with Fago Lovers Heaven, FagoLovers.net. Uh, what exactly is it that you do at FagoLovers.net? Officially, I'm a music reviewer, but I've branched out and also become an interviewer, show reviewer, and everything along those lines. I originally started as a music reviewer, of course. First review I did was ICP's Bang Pow Boom, and it was my, I guess you'd say, sample for Scotty to check out. He wanted to bring me on. We modified my style a little bit, so now we break it down track by track. We try to give the ninjas out there a really good view, at least from my standpoint, as a longtime juggalo. Not only a fan perspective, but I try to do more of a legitimate music review. So it breaks down everything from lyrics to content to tone to the beats. I mean, I break down all the way to the beats themselves and then bring it back up. And the end result is not only a Juggalo perspective, but I mean, if I wrote everything from a Juggalo perspective, everything would be like 9 or 10 out of 10 (laughs) for the most part, you know. I hear you, yeah. So (laughs) I take a step back and I review that. And then, uh, you know, I've been doing that since 2012. And then about 2014, I got a chance to interview Potluck and Kung Fu Vampire. Asked Scotty if I could throw that up on my YouTube as well as Fago Lover's YouTube. I sent it to him. He loved what I was doing there. He continued to get me interviews. I mean, I've interviewed Johnny Richter and Kung Fu again and Potluck and gosh, who else? I did an interview with Prozac at one point, but the recording turned out absolutely horrible because the venue was awful. So we never got a chance to use that, which was kind of a bummer. But I've sat down with Gorilla Voltage. I've sat down with a whole list of people. But That was the first time I got familiar with you was the Gorilla Voltage interview. Yeah, they are uh, longtime homies of mine. When they were out there on the road with Kung Fu being as roadies, they came through Tucson. And I knew Clock and Gray really well just from conversing. They ended up sleeping on the living room of my house oh, when they rolled back from the gathering. Oh, <laughs> so shit. it was, yeah, it was Gray, Clock, and a couple of the cats from San Jose that they brought with them so yeah they all came to my house and we had them crash out on our couches and the next day i woke up and made them some pancakes and you'll see in that gorilla voltage interview we mentioned that same thing because it was the first time we all got to hang out for extended periods they're real good friends of mine i've also tried to bring fago lovers a little love from tucson you know there's a lot of hip-hop artists out here one of the big ones i'm trying to get exposed through our channels is stack styles the dude is phenomenal he's a talent that's working his butt off and his skills are great. So you'll see his reviews on the site. You'll also see interviews I've done with him. I've done a live chat with him where we've sat there and I've interviewed and answered live questions. So I do a lot for the local music scene as well. Not only for Juggalos, but for everybody. I've never like restricted our reviews. You'll see I, in, I reviewed Marshall Mathers 2, which right. I can't tell you how much hate I got for that. <laughs> but... <laughs> Um, you know, it was constantly, why are you interviewing this dude? Like, why are you reviewing his stuff? And, you know, it's just like, dude, I'm a hip hop head. I love hip hop. I love rap, you know? And then of course you have artists who are kind of pretentious and I review their album and they don't like it. And they hit me up just bitching constantly. Take the review down. And I'm like, no, I'm not taking it down. Well, I'm going to call Scotty. I'm like, call Scotty. Like, (laughs) we're good. You know, I try to write my reviews from a perspective of constructive criticism, if that makes sense. I don't want to harsh a guy and just bash him because I don't like him on a personal level. I always try to keep it really professional. The few times I've gotten that, it's gone to Scotty and he's backed me 100%. We couldn't have a better leader slash designated guy for our website. Much love to him. You know, he he puts in a lot of time and effort for us. Yeah, yeah, Scotty is an excellent mother bird, definitely. He definitely stands up for us ninjas. Oh, yeah, for sure. And I've had a couple times I've been able to meet with him and talk to him. And 
it, it's been a really good experience so far. But yeah, roundabout way, that's what I do, man. Reviews, interviews, etc. And in 2018, I'm definitely looking to amp up the reviews. The past couple of years, I've not done a lot. I've done a few that I've done as favors for friends, but that's because of personal crap that was going on. Now, personal stuff's cleared up and I'm ready to move forward. In 2018, you're going to see Juggalotus hitting it. I'm going to try, and I say try, about every other week you'll see a new review up. So if you're out there and you're listening and you're an artist that wants a review, send it in. Send it to me, Juggalotus, at or 0069 at Gmail, or send it to Scotty and it'll get to me. I'm up to review anything and everything. So if you're sending something in, make sure that you understand I'm fair. I'm legit, dude. I don't lie. And if I think it sucks, I'm going to say it sucks. And I think that's something that everybody owes to artists. Very dope. Do you uh, do reviews for other things, not just uh, uh, albums? Like, would you ever do, like, movie reviews? Would you ever, uh, would you ever review this episode of the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> I would. I Actually, it's funny. I reviewed, gosh, there was a podcast that Scotty had me review. It was a wrestling podcast for Kevin Gill. Oh, okay. Um, I listened to that, and it was, you know, a whole podcast of that, and I reviewed that for him. So I'm up to review anything and everything. Really? You know, I love giving Con my Man? thoughts on things. I think that's the it. Might have been Con Man podcast. Yeah, fuck, fuck people it's, are gonna hate it's me. Been if I'm that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been a while. No, it's been a while. But anything that Scotty throws at me, you know, every now and then he'll ask me to do a show review. He'll hit me up and ask me, "Would you do video game reviews?" I'm like, "Dude, I'm down to review anything." Right, um, right. As long as I got the time for it, I'm down to do it. Well, you were saying earlier that you were really into movies and uh, cinema shit like that. I gotta ask, have you seen I the am. new uh, Justice League film? I have. I actually, I'm part of a group that gets screenings of films probably about four or five days before they come out. Oh, um, shit. I got a free screening. Yeah, it's all free. Uh, we come out and we're the ones that are like, this movie's great. And it's like, you know, random, you know, viewer or whatever. I'm in that kind of group. Wow, um, so I did go see the new Justice League. Yeah, right? <laughs> so I did go see that. I'm a huge Batman mark, in case anybody was curious. What do you want to know? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Just did you enjoy it, man? Because I'm also a huge Batman mark, and uh, I thought it was dope. A lot of people said that they didn't like it very much, but I thought it was better than Batman versus Superman. I did, too, 100%. I don't think it came near Wonder Woman. I think Wonder Woman was an epic of a film. Right, right. Um, but Justice League did justice, if you will. I have a guy at work that's a huge Marvel mark. So anything Marvel that comes out, he's just riding it hard. And anything right. DC that comes out, he goes into it skeptical. So this young cat, man, he went and saw Wonder Woman, came in the next day. So what'd you think, man? He was like, oh, I don't know, man. He's like, there's just so much wrong with it. And I was like, what was wrong with that film? Because to me, recent DC, that's the pinnacle of that arc, you know? Yeah, I agree. Um, he was like, well, when she picked up the tank, and I'm like, yeah, you know, when she picked up the tank, he's like, it was a World War One tank, not a World War Two tank. Oh, shit. So, like, <laughs> right. Like, he's like, and the guns they were using were not German. They were Bavarian. Or I work with a lot of military cats. This dude, man, he just found anything and everything to knock about right. a film that I thought was the pinnacle of DC. Yeah, I thought Justice League was great. I did not like the initial scene with the Amazonians and the, the battle there. I thought it was a little too CG. I hear um, you, yep. I agree. You know, it came off a little too CG'd, which I was like, man, mm, that's like one of the first ones in the movie. And I was like, man, I hope that's not the like precursor for everything coming. But I definitely liked what they did when it came time for Aquaman. And I, I can tell you, honestly, I hate Aquaman. Everything about that superhero, I loathe. And I actually thought Momoa did a great job with it. I liked the way that they beefed him up and actually made him kind of a badass instead of uh, making him the orange and green tight wearing weenie that he is normally so. right. just really quickly here because we're almost out of time uh have you seen the new star okay. wars film i did not i did not get a chance to go see it but i work with a lot of nerds out at uh, my job and nerds, reviews right? have been really well on it right, yeah right. i'm a computer guy by trade okay so i have not seen it yet either i was just uh just curious if you have so i have nothing to discuss about nope, the film I right now <laughs> uh, all right, Juggle Lotus. Uh, before we take off, uh, uh, what are you up to this holiday season? Going to be kicked in here in Tucson, man. I just moved in with my girlfriend in October. Between the two of us, we have nine kids. 
Uh, oh, shit. It, yeah, my three will be going with their mom. They live out in Reno, or if she does. And so we'll have the six of her kids here. Uh, we're going to be kicking it here with family and just trying to relax, man. I mean, my job gives me pretty much the 22nd of December until the 2nd of January off. They pay us to be gone. So Damn. spend a lot of time relaxing and trying to enjoy the family. Right, hell yeah. Well, good luck relaxing with six kids running around. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. It's going to be a challenge. Hi, right, homie. Any final words before we take off? Yeah, man. It's been a pleasure coming on and talking with you. It's something that when you put it out there, I was like, hell yeah, let's go on and talk. Hit me up on Facebook. Hit me up. Go through the Fago Lovers page. I'm cool with people looking me up. I'm on there as James Harris. That's my normal name, not Juggle Lotus. If you're local and you're coming through for a show, let me know. I'd be down to interview anybody coming through. Get in touch. And I look forward to 2018. It looks like it's going to be a dope-ass music year. Get in touch with us and uh, send your music in. I'm willing to throw it in my 2018 stash. Very dope. Thank you so much, homie. Blacker than black. Heart attack. Reality strikes as loud as gun battles at night. Your baddest advice for a flex, I shatter your life. You rapping for likes and shake you when you grabbing the mic. I'm slapping you twice and thrash you like a pass in the Christ. Wolfpackmerch.com Super holiday hookup Everything in the store is 10% off All new t-shirts, hoodies, knit hats, girl shirts, CDs, patches, posters, charms, baseball hats, and much, much more Bringing you the newest designs in every size imaginable And manufactured with the highest quality materials available All in one convenient online superstore Wolfpackmerch.com And as if it couldn't get any better for a one time only limited offer super holiday hookup everything in the store is 10% off yes that's right 10% off so don't delay bounce on over to wolfpackmerch.com and order your super fresh new wolfpack flavor now before it's too late Travis and Glenn at Strange Music partnered with the 12th Street Heritage Development Corporation this year. It's for Santa's Wonderland. It's coming up this Wednesday night. Well, today we went along as they shop for the kids. It's beautiful, man. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just like people need help, and I just want to help. For Kansas City rapper Tech 9 and his Strange Music business partner, Travis O'Gwen, <laughs> celebrating success means giving back. When I say we, I mean me and my partner, Travis, at Strange Music. We want to help. And the 12th Street Heritage Corporation is making a way for that. They're partnering with the 12th Street Heritage Development Corporation folks this year for Santa's Wonderland. It's a big party for families in the urban core. They loaded flatbed carts high with toys at Costco to make sure no kid will go home empty-handed. We try not to let any kid go home without a toy. On Wednesday night, they'll hand out a 1,000 toys to kids in need. Especially around Christmas is a time where every child should feel special should feel like they're important. Because that kind of holiday spirit is what makes this the most wonderful time of the year. We want to bring love, and that's what we want to spread. We want to spread love for everybody who may need it. Christmas 
Welcome back to the Fago Lovers Podcast. I am here with the one and only Kid Crusher. Kid Crusher, how the hell are you, brother? Doing good. Thank you so much for having me up on the podcast. Fucking love you guys, Fago Lovers. Yeah, yeah, not a problem, homie. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Anytime. You just released Tales from the Grinch a couple weeks ago. Uh, tell us about that track. It's a new single. Yeah, I really felt like the Grinch character like is a little played out. There's only so much you can talk about hating Christmas. But everyone loves the naughty list, so I thought, okay. <laughs> like for years, like I did uh, the Christmas Nightmare in 2013. And to me, I think that's the best Grinch song ever. And I was saying to myself, I'm not going to do another Grinch song unless I can top that song. <laughs> And again, the topic ruined me. I just think, yeah, there's not anything else I can do with the Grinch. Yeah, everyone kept saying, do another Grinch, do another Grinch. Like, I finished uh, a new album in July. I thought, like, to my producer, let's let's do something to throw out. Well, I was going to release a single from the new album, but I thought, like, let's do something fresh and Christmassy. Give it a try. I've always had the urge to just try a Grinch song. And I, like, produce something Christmassy, Grinchy. We had a couple of bands in mind that was influenced. It just fell together really quick, so it was, it was a really rushed thing. To, it, yeah, it was just something I thought, yeah, to to, to tie people over, because I've been, would have seen the people that have been absent for a while, because the last Kid Crush release was 2015 for the Back to the Kid Crusher. So I, I got to put something out this year. Or I'm just going to feel like two years of no releases is going to be weird, but there's a lot coming, and I'm hoping people are liking this, because there's a different spin on the Grinch, too. It's not hip-hop Grinch, it's a metal Grinch. <laughs> what did you think of it? I thought that shit was dope, actually, homie, and we're playing that uh, at the end of the podcast, too, for anybody listening. The sound on that, actually, I was going to ask about that. Uh, is that going to sound similar to the new Kid Crusher sound? Yeah, that's actually uh, what my producer was saying when he's making it. This basically gives everyone a, a slight taste of what my new album is going to sound like, minus the Christmas theme, obviously. This is this, Some people are confused thinking that I'm doing a Grinch album, and it's just a standalone Grinch single. Um, I've always wanted to do a, a flat-out Kid Crusher metal album. I've never had the facilities to do it, so it's always sort of turned more hip-hop than anything. I've found these guys uh, working sort of near Russia. We worked on one song together and then another one, and it's like I was just baiting songs. It almost was just going to be a mixtape, but I got a whole full-length album from these guys. We just developed a really good relationship together. I... <laughs> I'm i a little nervous about what people are going to think because Kick Rush has always got that hip-hop spin on I'm not saying there's not rap in it. It's just more of a you know a metal production. Obviously, you can tell from the Grinch song. So uh, what I ended up doing was starting another album. <laughs> While wow, this album's already done, I'm already starting another one that uh, compensates for all the metal. <laughs> so there's going to be another album following. I'm not sure at the same time, like how I did with Metal Murder 3 with 3D2. It more likely drops soon after, which is going to be more of a hip-hop metal. Well, it's always going to have metal around Kid Crusher, but it's more of a hip-hop orientated album. You're going to have a metal album, and then you're going to have your rap album following it. Right, and that was going to be my first question after you said it was going to be an all-metal album. Is is there going to be any rap on it at all? But So is there going to be any metal on the rap album coming out after then? There's always going to be guitars around Kid Crusher, but I'm working with a different producer on that album. I was going to get a featuring artist on my current metal album, but I didn't want to extend any of the songs because that metal album focuses more on me. But there's a couple of appearances on there, but very, very briefly, like on a chorus and... Uh, this other one, there was actually a metal band I work with, like a different one. The only way that I would get them on the album was to have their vocalist on it, too. So that's the only reason that I have featuring on that album. The rap album was mainly created for doing some features. There's still guitars there, but it's still in production that one, so I can't really say exactly what the entire track listing sounds like yet. Can you yeah, give us any uh, uh, details on the name or anything? The title of the albums, you say? Yeah, either one. I am completely sitting on everything until I got my right, big right. release. <laughs> so this is the first time I've done that. Usually I've released everything prior and advertised it for a year in advance or something. But now everything's going to become packaged. That's the main reason my new album's delayed. Because I finished it in July, like I said. I was meant to be shooting videos in September due to a scheduling conflict with my director. He can't shoot till February, so I'm looking at March to release that album. Okay, any... Um... <laughs> plans to uh, tour in a promotion of the album i've almost toured the usa tour thing has been so close like we've paid off the visa now so all the funding is pretty much set besides of a couple of things is like a waiver and plane tickets that's all it's left to pay for so the funding side's been fun thanks to my patreon <laughs> selfish shame plug right there <laughs> subscribe to kid crusher patreon 20 dollars <laughs> per month <laughs> Oh, uh, no, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much there. And I've got this promoter, uh, so to say, who's, uh, you know, helping me 
silently. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we've booked two different tours already. One, because I almost tried to put one together myself, but that fell through. But yeah, this this guy's been helping me. There's two tours that I had to pass out just because of the money situation back then. We're looking at 2018, obviously, right after the album comes out, I think, depending on what they want to do. I'm not going to be doing like a one-off show. It's going to be a tour. I've got no dates or details or anything because I don't even know what's happening yet. Very dope. That's not 100% locked in yet? Yeah. It's been like almost, what, 2008 was when I first went there. That's 10 years of waiting of me saying, next year, next year. <laughs> no shit. I didn't even know about the five-year ban until like three years into that waiting. So I like I had that five-year ban from trying to tour there. Then it's just been money. Like I didn't realize after being kicked out of America, the amount of money I have to spend on lawyers and there's there I got fines and shit for that. A lot of money just for getting kicked out. Like, what the fuck? They're really making it difficult for me to get there. It's not just get on a plane, you know? Otherwise, guys, I'd be fucking there and back a million times already. Right, right. Well, fingers crossed that shit works out for you this time, homie. If it doesn't happen next year, I'm really going to just throw in the towel. <laughs> like, right, I'm sorry, right. guys. Ten there years of waiting. I don't see it happening. It's looking really good, though, at the moment. I'm 90% sure next year. Well, I got to ask this. How is it being an underground horrorcore rapper in Australia? That's something I would have no fucking clue of. Uh, what's the fan base like? Oh, when I do shows, it's badass, but I don't really see many people doing the horrorcore thing. When I first started, like I had friends and stuff like I, I made, and, and I converted them to horrorcore. I don't know if you know uh, Trips and Chico used to be on my first few CDs. They were doing like flat out gangster rap when I met them, <laughs> and they see me come in the studio, and we made friends, and then I converted them. <laughs> Other hardcore artists, I've met a couple, but not really. If there are out there, and I haven't noticed them, so I apologize, but I don't really see any really on the grind in hardcore genre specifically. Like I see like hardcore and other sort of types of rap. What's it like being this joiner? Is that was that the main question? Yeah, basically, what's um, the fan base like? Oh, what's the fan base? I'm off topic. <laughs> right, right. Well, no, yeah, it was kind of a two part question. What's it like being a, a horrorcore rapper in Australia, and what's the fan base like? Yeah, it's pretty slow, to be honest, but like, I, I, I love the crowd. I don't really care if I'm playing for 10 people. I have the best time of my fucking life. <laughs> I love it down there. It's just awesome playing Australia. It's well overdue. I haven't toured again since 2015. Majority of my tours lately, I've just been, you know, the opening act, like helping other tours. I did uh, Tech 9 and uh, I did Blazing Boondocks, ICP. I love being the, uh, what do you call it, the, the showstopper, the start of the show. <laughs> I love opening, like warming the stage up. I feel like I can really get people in the mood when they're just standing around. <laughs> right, right. Um, where does the uh, clown persona come from? Obviously, ICP, the juggalo, juggalo scene. <laughs> That's a quick answer. <laughs> I need more of a detailed question of what you're trying to say. Is that my influence, or what do you mean right, the actual right. character of Kid Crusher? No, you pretty much uh, answered the question. Well, yeah, where does the character, where does the name uh, Kid Crusher come from? Kid Crusher was a wrestling move that I was doing when I was a wrestler. It just stuck with me. I had a ring to it. Didn't really think much of it. And I was uh, rapping under different names before then, uh, not doing the clown thing, but... I didn't think it was going to work at all. So, like, a lot of people confused, like, what the fuck? Do you crush kids? I'm like, it doesn't mean that at all. Like, it wasn't meant to mean that. It's like, I'm a kid and I crush you. And people are just so confused. Now I wish I did pick a different name. But, hey, maybe it sticks out so much it draws attention. So it fucking works either way. Right. Yeah, same with the juggle thing, like, painting my face. It was really a spur of the moment thing. Like, I made, like, a song. I was like, yo, like, I was, like, die hard into juggalos. I still am. I felt like I really represented Juggalo in Australia, and I always used to paint my face and run around and be a fucking clown, and so fucking I'm just going to do it, represent, and boom, it blew up, and I'm like, okay, this is my full-time job now. <laughs> so you say that it did, basically, the influence just came from uh, ICP then, basically. Definitely, 100%. I was always doing the type of rap I was doing before I got in ICP, the morbid, depressing stuff, and as soon as like I clicked in, to uh, the Jekyll Brothers that really felt like that's where it was, you know, where I really fit in with my music. Before then, I was like uh, listening to Manson and Slipknot, Corn, and I was trying to do a metal band, but I felt even people who watched me in the metal band felt like, yeah, you really fit more into the to rap scene with a little bit of metal. <laughs> right. So was it, uh, was it dope being selected as an official tunnel runner? It's so overwhelming, man. It really was. And I remember when they first announced it, that they were looking for tunnel runners, and Violent J was like, if you know anybody who wants to be a tunnel runner, or if you yourself want to be one, listen to me closely. 
don't come to us. We will come to you. And I sit there and shook like, fuck, I want this so bad and I can't do anything about it. Right. <laughs> so I sat there fucking cringing and shaking. I'm like, there was a thing before that, the AMB one, uh, Underground... Underground something. Psychos. That's right, right. Yeah, I wanted to be on that. And that was when I was just starting as a kid crusher. I didn't really have material, even studio material. I was already in the rap game, but not in the studio side of things. I didn't have my own studio then, so I didn't want to fall on my ass making a dick of myself <laughs> with shitty material. I watched that one on the sidelines and just seeing Tunnel Arms and I was already like established and ready. I'm like, fuck, I want this so bad. And I think it was the power of positivity, man, and just fuck the morning <laughs> I woke up to an inbox from St. Clown Bossy's MySpace. Just I had a heart attack, man. It took me about two days to process. It was awesome, but like I didn't even know if they dead set wanted me on it until like I've already finished the song. So I was stressing the whole time. I made the song, I sent it to them, and I was like, fuck. Am I still going to get through this song? So I started saying more songs. I recorded, I think, four songs in total. I just wanted the best that I could do for that. Originally, I wanted to get uh, my song Killing Shit on there, and that would have put Trips and Chico as Tone Runners as well. And Violent J said to tell me that he loved that song, but uh, Fucked Up ended up being the one they chose, right. which is cool. I still haven't got the chance. Like, I kick myself and not actually thanking Violent J when I got to meet him for actually putting me on there. Because I ended up getting Tunnel Runner tattooed on me because, like, that really put me on the track to know that I'm doing something right, you know? <laughs> and fucking, I'm right there. I'm on the right track. It's like, almost like a pat on the back and congrats, man. You're really kicking ass. That really gave me the motivation to keep going. So definitely 100%. Tunnel Runner is, is a big milestone for me, and it means the world to me. Always hold it that close. I'm rambling, rambling like a fucking, <laughs> like I just graduated or some shit. <laughs> oh, good, homie. And honestly, man, uh, I knew who you were before Tunnel Runners, but when you uh, oh, cool. when you got on the uh, Tunnel Runners album, that's when I actually uh, started to pay attention, I'm not going to lie. And uh, yeah, shit was nah. dope. Thank you. I have to ask, uh, and I'm not even sure what track it was, but uh, how was it that uh, a Kid Crusher track was featured on the Law & Order episode, Steel Eye Death? You would thank the uh, Psycho Sam guy about that. Law and Order based an episode on him, and they, like, this is probably wrong, I'm not sure, but during that episode, when that happened, the actual thing, they uh, researched about him. I don't think you can see his page now on MySpace, but on the Psycho Sam MySpace, he's got pictures of me, pictures of Mars, pictures of other rappers, just like Satanic, SKR, all that, just pictures of them all over his page. I think they went to me because I was the one who was painting my face and they wanted to kick at the Juggalo scene. But when they hit me up, they hit me up saying it had nothing to do with him. <laughs> so these snaky motherfuckers like did the whole MIB act on me. Like, we uh, just want you to be featured on this episode and your music's going to be played in the background as a serial killer liked your music. I asked them flat out, has this got to do with Psycho Sam? They said, no, no, not at all. Well, they kind of were telling the truth because they made their own interpretation of him. Obviously, the stories change. And they said, it's not a Juggalo thing, because I asked that as well. And they said, uh, it's going to be based on me. They're going to put my music in, like, just the serial killer's favorite song, whatever. They took posters and sent them posters. They're going to put my posters around. They didn't even mention my fucking name. They just laughed at me on a laptop. <laughs> so right. they really snakily got me involved with that. That's how that happened, short and sweet. So I never even saw the episode. So what actually happened? They listened to a Kid Crusher song on a laptop. It, what happened on it? The yeah, two detectives uh, find out where they went. They found some tickets to a festival, and they go talk to the manager, and the manager talks about how Juggalos are ridiculous and opens up his laptop and plays 15 seconds of one of my music videos and saying stupid and insulting shit about us. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, homie, I can understand how you'd be a little bit pissed off about that. The backlash I got was like, what the fuck? The whole time, they wouldn't even send me the video. They're like, like I said, I might be like, oh, we can't fucking, we can't show you anything in advance due to spoiling the episode or anything. <laughs> Walking me blindfolded off a plank. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's fucking whack, homie. So, uh, just switching things up a bit then, you uh, recently listed 13 favorite horror films. I think that's what it was, right? Your 13 favorite horror films? Yeah. So how long have you been down with horror shit, basically? Well, horror is actually not my favorite genre of movie, if that's the question. Thriller and sci-fi and that sort of shit is. Like, I, I'm a complete flat-out movie freak. Number one, since I was, like, a kid, video star, I was raping the fucking video stars every day. My first job was working at Blockbuster Video. I don't know if you have Blockbuster over there. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah And that, that was... 
that was like me flat out when I was in primary school. Like, what do you want to do when you grow up? I'm like, I want to work in a fucking video store. Dead set. That's the rest of my life. <laughs> you know, the first dibs on, I got like movie cutouts all around my room and shits. Movies are life to me. Like doing something uh, like that just was like for shits and giggles. It really made me happy to talk about movies. I wanted to do something movie related and I was going to do like a website for it, but I thought it's too much time and all shit. So I thought I'd do something kid crush related just really quick just to do suggestions because I love talking about movies, especially suggesting to people. Just kicked it out there for fun. I would really want to do more, but it takes too much time, and I'm just not sure if it's worth it. <laughs> Shit, I had no clue that Kid Crusher was such a cinephile. Oh, 100%. Like, my home away from home, cinemas, man. Great. All right, so how long have you been down with the Wicked shit, then? Jekyll Brothers, man. 1999, maybe 98, because being, like, heavily into the wrestling, I, I watched WCW a lot before WF. Seeing ICP come out with Vampiro back in the day, they really struck me when I watched them on WCW and it made me interested. And I heard the commentators saying that they were musicians. And I still remember the day, it was like a couple of days later, I went to go pick up the WCW soundtrack. And like right next to the WCW soundtrack was the Jekyll Brothers. So I picked them both up. And there's even a, a song by ICP on the WCW soundtrack. It was Take It, I think. Right. Yeah, Jekyll Brothers. That was the number one that hit me. I don't think that's exactly when I became a juggler because I didn't know what it was all about then. And <laughs> to be embarrassed to say that I thought Bizarre was a six Jokers card when it came out. <laughs> homie, so did I. So did honestly, homie, yeah. I think a lot of juggalos did. Yeah, back then, you know, like I didn't really was on the internet much. So, like, I didn't see anything. I just seen card and went off. Oh, so, this is a six Jokers card. And I love Bizarre, but, like, man, like, I was expecting, like, a masterpiece of, like, six Jokers card. And, like, even then, I couldn't find the previous Jokers cards. It was so fucking hard to find them in Australia. Right, um, right. I came around the Malenko era, right? So, then, uh, learned yeah. about Jekyll Brothers after that. I thought they just released the Jokers cards as albums. So, when Bizarre yeah. came out, I'm, I'm looking in Bizarre, looking for the, you know, how they have the six faces in it. Yeah, yeah. I'm not seeing that anywhere. I'm listening to it. I'm thinking, what the fuck is this? Like, this is not the Six <laughs> Jokers card. No shit. Yeah. When uh, Shangri-La came out, I didn't even know it was coming. I just walked in the CD store and just see it there. I was like, fuck, that looks amazing. Like, the Wraith's just sitting there. I buy it, and they give me all this extra shit with it. I'm like, fuck, I'm just buying one CD. It's the first time that shit's ever happened to me. Just, like, CD after CD coming with one. I had the sampler pack and the DVDs. The DVD is what caught me. That's the number one that converted me. The uh, seminar of Violent J talking about all the six jokers cards. Right. That shit is what converted me, man. I was like, fuck yeah. And then they come to Australia a couple of months later, and then boom, I'm fucking full time into it. <laughs> that changed my life. Yeah, I can understand that, homie, for sure. It's pretty much Christmas. What is Kid Crusher up to this holiday season? <laughs> told you off fucking air that uh yeah i'm like moved house and then i basically packed up and went back to my original house so i'm like packing and moving and crazy shit this this christmas i can't even process the fact that i gotta buy people presents this year <laughs> because of that factor fuck my house is like a bombshell but yeah packing moving yeah no plans man um the missus was pointing out some like crazy christmas outfits i can wear maybe i'll put the fucking grinch mask on and like go sit down in church for the first time in my life i don't fucking know hey man that <laughs> sounds like a flan hey no <laughs> Hi, homie. So this is a question that I actually ask every episode of the podcast, and I'm actually going to change it up for the first time ever. In 29 episodes, I'm changing up the question. Normally, what I would ask is if you were stranded on a deserted island and you only had three CDs with you, what three CDs do you got? But learning that you're such a cinephile kid crusher, we're going to change that to films. So you're stranded on a deserted island. You only got three movies that you can watch. What three movies do you got? Wow. I had that question asked on a different interview station, too, and I had flipped the same fucking answer with both fucking questions, too. Really? They, uh, last, yeah, for the same... I could do it for both movie and music there. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, Sorry, said, is this this was on Replicon Radio? That's right, yeah. So did they ask you the movie question, too? Uh, no, just the music one. Oh, okay. <laughs> you can cut that out. Just check want. it. No, no, there's no way I'm cutting that out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, I said uh, the Back to the Future soundtrack, one, two, and three for the soundtrack there oh. for the movie, too. One, two, and three. That'll do. <laughs> oh, snap. That's a fucking great answer, homie, honestly. <laughs> it's the power of our life. Hi, homie. I want to thank you so much for coming on the uh, podcast, Kid Crusher. Is there any final words, any shout-outs that you want to give before we take off here? 
Yeah, I just want to, again, apologize like I do every other time. People waiting in America, I've really been busting my balls here and, like, bleeding my pockets dry to try and make it happen. I know it seems simple. I could, you probably think I'm just waiting and waiting and just procrastinating, but really, it's a bigger mess than you could ever imagine. And that's why, like, I have been influencing people to jump on my Patreon because that will help funding-wise with projects and getting over there. And that's 100% what I love to do is put music out for you guys, and I definitely want to tour for you guys. And on my Patreon, you can hang out with me every fucking month. I'm giving away so much shit on my Patreon, you have no idea. I'm giving away shirts that are worn on stage. I'm giving away the fucking the Grinch mask of Warren, the Naughty List music video this month on my Patreon. Like, just huge shit. And all you gotta do is just throw 20 bucks. All you can do 5 bucks is just watch us. Is that too selfless of a fucking promo to sell on my Patreon? <laughs> nah, man, I totally get it, man. You're trying to fucking, you're trying to hit up America, homie. I totally understand. I'm hitting that up. And I hate fundraising and asking for money that way because I'm giving back 100%. I even made, got a pop figure for Kid Crusher made for Patreon exclusively. So I'm like throwing money, investing into more stuff to give back. With today's day of trying to sell CDs, especially for an underground artist that usually ends up usually just getting digital downloads for free and all that. Like it's really hard to make an income on it. So Patreon has been saving me. So I, I do shout out to all my patrons who have been there. It really has been the backbone of me lately. The new album, 100%, is going to smash you guys so hard in the face you're not going to know what hit you. <laughs> it's, it sounds like it's been very quiet lately. But all last year, I've been working on it, most of this year. So this album's coming, new album coming. I've also got a secret album I'm working on as well. So there's three albums potentially going to drop next year. Music videos, possibly the American tour. So I am coming back like a fucking tsunami for you guys, bro. <laughs> Very dope. Thank you so much, Kid Crusher. No, thank you, Fago Lovers. Love you guys. I've been with you forever. I don't know if Scotty D remembers. Even before I was Kid Crusher, I've been bugging you guys in the wrestling when I was doing that, promoting that shit. So I've been following you guys for a long time. Well, that's also very dope to hear, homie. It's always uh, it's always good to hear that uh, the person you're interviewing actually checks out your shit. 100%. And your show, man. Good luck with it. And I love it, man. I've been following even the 2017 and everything you guys are kicking ass, man. Glad to see you guys still going. Hell yeah, brother. Appreciate that. Thank you so much, brother. No problem. Merry Christmas, guys. like it's been uh 15 years that they've been running this fucking christmas story like over and over it just goes on and on for 24 hours of christmas yeah i can't wait for it i hope they make the meatloaf again ruffy wears the pink bunny so cool just i can't take it anymore somebody shoot ralphie with the damn BB gun in the eye already and get it done with so we can start watching something else because I'm tired of this shit. Got me to thinking like, what the fuck's going on and how long are we gonna let this happen until we get another movie, another Christmas movie that goes 24 hours. Something else, like, man, I don't know, pick one. Nightmare Before Christmas, maybe let's do 24 hours of that. That'd be sick. Maybe, you know, we'll have some competing stations do another shit. Maybe we'll throw Elf on Spike. And then we'll throw maybe uh, Christmas Vacation over on uh, AMC. Something like that. And then they need to make something Jack Frost play Never Again. Because that was a horrible movie. But there are other movies out there. Home Alone 1, Home Alone 2, Never Home Alone 3 because that was garbage as well. There's other movies out there. They need to start thinking about this, and if not, we'll start petitioning motherfuckers for this to happen because if I'm getting tired of it, I'm going crazy. I can't watch any more turkey. I can't watch the motherfucking boot hit him in the face, Ralphie and all that shit and talking shit and slapping Santa and, and wanting to get his stupid ass gun. I don't care. It's a fucking BB gun. Who gives a fuck, motherfucker? Get a real gun. Get a real gun. If y'all have any ideas, you know, kick them to me. Let me know. Comment on this shit. Let me know what the fuck y'all think. Maybe we'll uh, we'll get together and try to make this shit happen for Christmas for the motherfucking kid. Damn it. All right. That's going to do it for this episode of the podcast. I want to thank all of you ninjas for tuning in. Last year for the podcast, I was just chilling out by the uh, uh by the fireplace drinking my pineapple fago 
Uh, this year I had some pink wine shit. I didn't think I was going to like it. It was actually really good. It was kind of like sweet. Um, <laughs> either way, thank you to my homie Kid Crusher. Thank you so much for coming on and uh, speaking with us. It was a very interesting interview. Uh, hit up Kid Crusher's Patreon. Uh, link is in the show notes for that. Thank you so much to our homie Juggalotus. It was a very interesting interview, and that ninja has actually offered to come back on sometimes, so don't be surprised if you hear that ninja's voice again on future episodes of the Fago Lovers Podcast. Ninjas, on the next episode of the Fago Lovers Podcast, dropping in two weeks on December 31st, New Year's Eve, our homie Lex the Hexmaster. Magic Ninja Entertainment's very own Lex the Hexmaster. Tune in for that. If you want to get your comment read on the air, hit up iTunes.com or .ca. <laughs> I'm in Canada. Either way, iTunes, give me a five or a four star review. Leave a review. I will read that shit on the air. Ninjas, this is your homie Roscoe signing off. I want to wish all of you a very Merry Christmas. And actually, from all of us at Fagolovers.net, we would like to wish you all a very Merry Christmas. Remember to keep an open mind. Peace.
So I had like, you know, 10 people in front of me and then like a good 50 people lined up against the wall. And I start my set and my set is obviously blowing their fucking minds talking about (laughs) rape and murder and crazy shit and jacking (laughs) off my microphone in their faces. The shock I seen on their faces, I almost felt like I was raping them. I'm like, I got to (laughs) stop. This just seems weird. uh, By all means, I'm not for the whole rape topic or whatever. It's just the key. Yeah, yeah, that's it's obviously for shock and whatever. The more the songs kept going, I just <laughs> there's probably two or three people in that line that actually were getting into it. The rest were just sitting there shocked. I'm like, you motherfuckers are buying a game which rapes and kills, motherfuckers. What's your problem? Jesus. 